bonjour. Je tiens à remercier le Mataf Museum, euh, Art Dubai et Global Art Forum pour leur euh, généreuse invitation. I start with a quotation of Isidoro Valcarcel Medina. The spectator exists, does exist if the art doesn't. The exhibition The Death of the Audience was presented in uh, 2009 in the mythic home of the secession in Vienna, Austria. At the turn of the 20th century, artists created the condition for a renewal of art in society by breaking down the boundaries separating the different institutional disciplines and gave this movement's name to their exhibition venue, Secession. In presenting the work of artists who were active during a second period of rupture, the period from 60 to 80, and particularly during the 70s, this exhibition interrogates another decisive moment in our recent history. One could possibly regard Viennese Jugendstil as a form of postmodernism preceding modernism itself. It is also tempting to compare the emancipated status of the secession artist with those contemporary artists who have recently been subject to the attempt to define them as anti, alter, or neo-modern. Rather than trying to define a position as a movement or front as a party, this exhibition focuses on the definition and the place of the defiant act of secession that is inspired by artists. Secession means rupture, insurrection, transgression, insu insubordination, revolution. In the exhibition, these topics are presented from a more intimated level to the most monumental one. For the, from the sweetest to the more variant position, as suggested by the presence of Frank Xavier Wagenschen's portrait of Marie Antoinette in the center of the exhibition rooms. Marie Antoinette has become an, an aesthetic icon, a mirror of the arts of her time and he is by now a political icon at the source of the French Revolution. In the portrait by Wagenschen, Marie Antoinette is de depicted as a teenager dressed in Austrian Baroque style shortly after when passing the frontier of the empires and becoming Dauphin, she was given a new neoclassical French look. In the painting, she is playing an unknown score on the piano the score we all know now is the score of the French Revolution. After the protest of uh, 1968, and partly inspired by Pierre Klosowski's writings, Gilles Deleuze and Félix Gattari developed a seminar series called Anti-Oedipus, which is based on de-territorialization. The unconscious is not a theater, the unconscious is a factory. Their critique of Freud's theory of the Oedipal complex can rudely be described as a move away from a rigidly imposed hierarchical arborescence context. The artists of this exhibition are aware that strategy of transgression or de-territorialization de must not and never can reach a state, an ideal form, in which they can resolve themselves. A transgression must engender another transgression. All the artists exhibited here could be described as professional outsiders. In being marginalized or in allowing themselves to become marginalized, from the art market or institution, these artists have each given priority to a form of art as a critical, concrete, and daily practice. In fact, none of the artists exhibited here were part of the dominant avant-garde movement that 
that is used to describe the art history of the 60s to the 80s. Or if they participated in parts of this movement, like David Lamanas for Cosmetural Art, Emilio Prini for Arte Povera, Rashid Arin for Minimal Art, Francerat Valtor for Performance Art, Robert Brer for Kinekit Art, Gianni Petena for Ar Architectura Radicale, or Anna Alprim for Postman on Dance, they voluntarily or involuntarily, due to their fundamental lack of discipline, distanced, distanced themselves from its ultimate goal. In accordance with John Latham's definition of the artist as an incidental person, or as, as proposed by Gianni Petena as a spy, all their artistic strategy break with the official and institutionalized artistic movement and figure, and reintroduce their practices in close relation to the matter of common everyday life, like, like David Lamelas with time as activity, David Medalla with impromptu, Odile Duboc with Les Fernands, all the artists in this exhibition propose the reappropriation of the field of the use value that is monopolized by consumer society and not considered as a value for art. In other words, all of them have chosen the factory rather than the theater. Franz Erhard Walter and his Benutzen object, Nicola L. with her functional art, Anna Alprin with her tasks, Isidoro Valcarcel Medina by employing urbanism tools, Lois and Francisca Weiberger in producing reversible gardens, Hans Walter Muller by building architecture out of air. All these artists <coughs> share an individual experience of the margin due to geopolitical reason like Julius Kohler, Edward Krasinski, Jiri Kovanda, or Goran Tribujak, or due to gender or racial reasons like Sanya Ivekovic, Rashid Arin, David Medela, Michel Jornak, or Walter Pfeiffer. Some are marginalized more simply due to their deep conscientiousness and strong conviction of being at the resistant front of the movement of the entire society. Like Bernard Basil, it's okay to say no, or Emilio Prini, Luisa Uza. They were all excluded from the marketing strategy of the 60s to 80s avant-garde. Despite this fact, they were not less concerned about the challenge of this period, authorship and spectatorship. They were ultimately marginalized because they were more concerned about reintroducing art in the philosophy of everyday life than about promoting art only within the art scene. They were involved in politics and criticism, Arin, Cornelius Cardio, in education, Alprin, Duboc, Kowalski, or immersed in experimental studio as their daily work of art like Latam, Krasinski, Carlo Cartucci, and Carla Tato, or Walter Muller. After the war, the artist is definitely not the only one to make the work of art. As Marcel Duchamp start, state in 1957, c'est le spectateur qui fait le tableau, in the late 70s, authorship, Marcel Duchamp or Roland Barthes, and spectatorship, Deleuze and Gattari or Guy Debord, were in a crisis. The title of this exhibition testify to this change by, mean, by means of breaking with the limiting accent pla placed on the role and mission attributed to the artist. The title, The Death of the Audience, with its reference to Roland Barthes, 68 essays, The Death of the Author, acknowledges 
the death of the spectator as a logical consequence at present. The exhibition responds to this loss in two ways. Either the spectators have liberated themselves in the sense that art has succeeded in creating an interactive dynamic that reestablishes the status and the name of the protagonist in question, like Jacques Rancière uh, recently uh, wrote, the spectator, uh, emancipated spectator, after Deleuze and Gattari, or the spectators have alienated themselves in a process of interpassivity, which, is, which ultimately absorbs them and stripes them of their identity, like Slavov Zizek, after the war, said. The invitation card addressed to the public invites the audience to their own funeral. Organized as a ritual in the sense of Michel Jorniak or Anna Alprins, who have redefined this notion, Ceremony of Us in 69, Mess pour un corps in 69 too, the exhibition statement restitutes the true definition to the opening, that is to say, the tradition form of the passive spectator is dead, and instead, everybody is invited to take part in an open form. Thank you.